Hey everyone, this is a continuation of my last video, and I guess you could say the boat series, where we created a buoyant boat and then masked out the water, so make sure to check those videos out first if you haven't. Now, what we're doing here is adding drivable functionality to this boat. First, we need to consider what controls the player will be using. In this case, that's move forward and backward, turn left and right, and E to enter and exit the boat. So go to wherever you have your inputs. In my case, that's the default first person input folder and then actions. And that'll be IA move boat, control D to duplicate, IA steer boat, and IA interact for a basic interaction. So before I back out, Click on uh, Move Boat and Steer Boat. Enter will open them both. Um, and then change the value type to Axis 1D. And then we're good to go. So I'm going to back out of here because this is where Epic has the input mapping context. Uh, and let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll call it IMC Boat. And as you would guess, we have to add move boat and steer boat, but interact has to go into your default player uh, context. So I'm going to add that quickly here. I interact, and then you can click on this button here and press the key, which in this case is E, and it'll assign it. Okay, now let's move on to IMC boat. course, as I said, IA move boat and then IA steer boat. Each of these will have two mappings. Move boat will be assigned W and S and turn boat will be assigned D and A. Now W, which is the positive X axis, is the default forward vector and D, which is the positive Y axis, is the default right vector. That means S and A are the negative values, so we need to add a negate modifier to S and A. And that's it. Now that your input is configured, open up your boat blueprint. And let's add a uh, box collision component. I'll rename that to interact uh, overlap. And you just kind of want to set that up to whatever size uh, you want. So this is the point where the player is overlapping where they press E and they will get in the boat, essentially. And then, uh, of course, go down. Make sure the player will actually overlap. So by default, that will be ignore everything except to overlap pawn. Next, we can go up. Uh, to the actual mesh, the boat mesh. Open that and we can add a socket for uh, just player or player eyes or whatever you want to call it. This is the attach point of the player. So you can start off around the middle seat about so high and of course you can come back to this see how it looks and you can play around with the location of it but for now that's good so we're all done with the modifications to the boat now we can go to the actual player character again mine is in the default location now first of all we need a variable for controlled boat and set that to course, as you just saw, the boat object. 
Okay, now right click on the event graph and search for your interact event. All right, first of all, you can drag out your boat variable, get boat, convert to validated get. So this is whether we are in the boat or not. So if not valid, drag out a branch, and this will be get overlapping actors. So if we're overlapping a boat, right? And the condition will be is valid index. So that's we're getting uh, all the actors we're overlapping, and we're, the the filter is a boat. So this will only return boats uh, that the player is overlapping. And then is valid index is basically is there even one? So if there is. we can get that one, which is element uh, index zero. That's the first one. Or first we have to cast to boat. Right click, convert to pure cast. Now you can set boat. And then we're gonna attach Attach actor to actor. Of course, boat here is the parent. The player, the self, is the target. And the socket is the socket we added in the mesh, which, remember the name was player for me. Location, we want to snap to target. Rotation, keep world, scale, keep world. Don't mod So which means don't modify rotation, don't modify scale. We're only snapping location. And then uh, set actor, enable collision. So this is just so you're not uh, getting weird physics effects from overlapping with the boat. And then disable movement of the player. And finally, get local viewing player controller, get enhanced input local player subsystem, and this is where we add our mapping context for the boat controls. And it'll override the default walking controls as long as you set priority to one. Make sure you set this to, to IMC boat. Okay, and then before we test that, let's quickly add IA move boat and IA steer boat just so I can print string and set that to zero seconds so it will not hang around. So you'll only see the text when you're holding the button. And plug in the value. So you'll notice when I'm walking around, you won't get any uh, feedback here. Even though it's the same keys, remember? So I'm walking around, I'm pressing all of the, uh, the boat control keys, WASD, but I'm not getting anything. Now, let's overlap the boat, press E, and now you see I'm pressing WASD, and we're getting feedback. Before we deal with movement, let's deal with getting out of the boat.
So, going back to the beginning, if boat is set, or uh, if boat is not set, so if we're not in a boat, we get in the boat. Well, we check for an overlapping boat, then we get in the boat. If we do have a boat, we detach from actor. And then all of these are keep world. Then we can set boat to nothing. Set movement mode back to walking. Set actor enable collision or whatever you decide to do. Just put it back to the way it was. And I'll go over to copy this to make it quicker. Remove mapping context. And again, make sure to set this to boat. Okay, let's go try that. We're in, we're out. But you see how you kind of, I, I clipped through a little bit. It's like launching me a bit. So what I had set up here before was Uh, let's get root component to keep it as modular as possible. You could do capsule component, but again, root component, again, it's just more modular. Um, add relative location. And this is just kind of just applies to this boat mesh and where the socket is, which is why I included it a bit later. All right. See how now it's not causing issues with the boat mesh and like sending it flying. All right, so let's go on to movement. So down to IA move boat. This is actually a lot easier now. So on triggered, add a, wait a minute, Just add a boat first, get the boat variable, or drag it out here. Either way, add force to that, which will be the root component, which is static mesh. And then from the action value, we need to turn this into a vector. And right now this is world location. So to convert that to, you know, relative to the boat, I mean, some people do different things. I, I always just get said actor, whatever you're dealing with. And I do get um, actor rotation and then I rotate the input by the actor's rotation and make sure to click Excel change here um, that way it doesn't use mass it doesn't consider mass on this force, which again just makes it more modular for other meshes. Um, okay, so there's an issue here. Kind of a special case. So let me just show you this boat. This is set up to send the boat forward, right? And X, which is red, is the forward vector. This mesh is actually rotated 90 degrees on the Z value. 
So positive Y is actually forward in this mesh. Ideally, you would export the mesh and re-import it with a rotation. But that's kind of annoying. So I'm going to combine the rotator here. Since we know the rotation that needs to happen, 90 degrees on the Z value, and that should do it. One final thing. I'll get in here, and I'm holding W. And it seems like nothing's happening, because the value is so low, inputs will only output a value between 0 and 1. So, you can either multiply this by 100, or go into your input action itself, which is what I'm going to do. So IA move boat and steer boat, I'm going to open, add a modifier, scalar, uh, only the X value is relevant, uh, so I'll do 100. Actually on move boat, on move boat I'll do 250. But now we don't have to mess around with this, and it keeps the code cleaner. So let's try that out. Now we can go forward and backward. And press E and we're out and we can walk around like normal. Final thing to do is set up the steering. So once again we just get boat, grab the static mesh component, And all we got to do is add torque. And uh, on what axis, right? This is going to be the Z axis. So we split that and plug the input value directly into Z. Again, click this box. And that really should do it. Let's go check it out. Okay, well that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what else you want to see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.